interesting game two out west as the Golden State Warriors get ready to take on the New Orleans Pelicans in this one. And if I'm uh, not mistaken, I think we are seeing three and a half, uh, maybe uh, two and a half, rather, uh, with the possibility of maybe New Orleans uh, getting a little bit more money, becoming a three-point favorite before tip here, Ski. 234 as a total. How are you breaking uh, this one down with the Warriors who could certainly use a win here? Yeah, and that, that's kind of what I'm thinking about here. My recent performance stats as far as the last five games, the categories that I care about, all favor the Pelicans, offensive rating, defensive rating, rebound percentage. Pelicans have covered four of their last five games. Um, so, you know, they have been playing well. But to what you said, I do think Golden State is the more desperate team. They're two games below 500. And this is a team that over the years, I mean, you can go back a bit. Whenever they're at home as an underdog, I mean, they perform pretty damn well. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I know for a fact uh, those numbers are good. If you just look at this season, they're only 2-1-1 one, one so far as a home dog. So whenever I get them in front of their home crowd getting points, I really want to look towards their way. And regular season – you have to look at who cares the most about the game. So with that in mind, I think the Warriors are that team. I would be looking towards them plus the short number. So we got uh, Draymond uh, looming to return there, RC. It remains to be seen whether or not uh, people are going to be excited about that. But no more Chris Paul, obviously, so they can use uh, all hands on deck. Boy, this would make a pretty big statement if they were able at home as a dog to be able to beat uh, this Pelican squad. What do you think we're getting here tonight? Yeah, I mean, the side for me is tough. I think the the total might be a better way to look. I know both of these teams are pretty well-rested. Um, if we're looking at momentum, I think Ski mentioned Pelicans have that in the bag. But, um, you know, I think, you know, Pelicans do have a potential look ahead to the Nuggets, though. So I'm not 100% sure they're going to be focused on this Warriors squad right now, especially with how the Warriors have been playing. Uh, this is the last of a seven-game homestand for the Warriors, and that it, it didn't go well for them either. Uh, I know the Warriors will want to, you know, probably close this out with a win, try to build some some type of momentum before they head out onto onto this road trip. Uh, I think one way to tackle this, like I said, from the total perspective, without Paul and Green, uh, the Warriors are missing, you know, two key defensive players here. Um, and then, you know, the pace should go up as well without Chris Paul. Uh, the other piece is, you know, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Zion is still questionable, right? He has that questionable tag here. And I think it would be a good idea to, like, wait for his status because when he's out, the, the Pelicans are actually 5-2 and two to the over. Uh, their offense tends to actually be a little bit more efficient without him. I think um, the ball gets uh, passed around a little bit more. You see a little bit more team ball. You see the three ball uh, um, open up for them as well. And then also going back to the Warriors, uh, three and one the over as home dogs this season so that supports the over as well but uh yeah to, to me i think the over might be the play in this one we're gonna have to be you know it's such a strange thing uh you know we know golden state fourth highest clip of chucking up threes that should not be surprising what's surprising is they're only about average at doing so at about 37 percent and they've actually been better on the road than they've been at home hitting them uh everything that we have learned uh to bet with Golden State over the last couple of years. E even the third quarter uh, is a coin flip these days here. So what do we do with this game tonight against New Orleans? Well, I, I don't know what everybody does, but for me, I can't play Golden State right now. They're just a horror show. Um, Ronald talked about the seventh of a seventh game homestand, so that means they've had six already. They're two and four on this homestand three times. They've been beaten by Ooh. double digits in this homestand on their home floor. Um, their, their defense has been absolutely horrendous during this uh, string. They're now the 29th rated defense over the course of the last 10 games where defensive efficiency is concerned. New Orleans is number two. Pretty big gap there. I know Ski talked earlier about all the stats to him that matter. Point toward over this course of time. I will say this. Um, I'm tired of these post-game quotes. I, let's just add to it now because every single time I come on this show, it seems like Steph Curry or Steve Kerr is telling you 
Steph Curry's quote after just getting trashed by Toronto, 133 to 118. We got punked from the jump. It happens all the time, and they don't do anything about it. Again, this desperation talk with Golden State, I think we said it the other day, it's been going on for over a month, six weeks maybe, and they've done nothing to do anything about it. To me, New Orleans, a team playing better ball. Ronald pointed out some statistics where they play just as well offensively, if not better, without Zion, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I don't know, Joe. I can't play Golden State. I think New Orleans is the right side here. Yeah, and they've been uh, all of a sudden figuring out how to shoot it from deep New Orleans too, right? Last five games, almost 47% from three. Damn, they are hitting some shots here. And the bank could be up to something there with that uh, that total.